Hi, my name is Mohammed Salvatri Sisaqbi and welcome to our CWTC Get Connected community podcast to share experiences, promote services and networking and great opportunities available for residents of Aldo. I'm a firm believer that women empowerment and confidence building are essential pillars of a thriving society. By fostering an environment that celebrates the unique strengths and capabilities of women, we not only unlock their potential, but also continue to uh, contribute to a more equitable and inclusive world. The Sport and Action for Women's Network in Oldham is doing a great job in building confidence in women and making a positive change. To find out more, we have invited Rosali, CEO of the organization, and Karen Saville, who is the inclusion and team lead, to tell us more about their good work. Welcome both. Oh, thank you very much, Hello, Mohammed. How are you? We are fine, thanks. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming to the studio. Uh, Rose and uh, Karen, if you want to tell us briefly about your education career and uh, what you do as an organization. Well, uh, education was um, got um, a PA and a master's in English mm -hmm. from Manchester Metropolitan and one from Uganda. So education, academic wise, I've, I've done a lot because I, I like keeping myself yeah. informed, if I put it that way. Yes, yes. And as an organization as well, we, um, we work with black African women, predominantly but not exclusive, and they're based in older. And we've been around for a while, been around for about 18 years. Okay. But more forcefully in the last five years, Mm -hmm. The years of COVID have really, really been tough. So that's what really propelled us to work more. So I left my job and fully concentrated on who's up there. Karen. My education, um, formally, uh, I have qualified as a social worker and I have worked for many years in the statutory sector. I retired about five or six years ago. Um, and using my real experience of life, went to work with Draws at Psalm, and it's my life experiences that have got me through and have made me the women and the woman that I am. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, in terms of specific challenges for the black African women uh, within our communities, how can we address these challenges and uh, support their empowerment? First of all, we cannot treat something that we, you, you cannot treat a wound, you cannot just put a plaster on, yeah. a, on a septic infected wound. Sure. And the women, the challenges that black African women have in Oldham needs to be addressed from, from the core. Sure. And some, most of the challenges that our women meet are like, they are in an intersection of so many issues. Mm -hmm. So there's racism, mm -hmm. there's um, immigration, mm -hmm. there's poverty, there's harmful cultural practices, and so many other things. And the, the challenge is the challenge that we have, that we just support them. We try to support them holistically, but can only address one thing at a time yes. because of who we are, what the, the limited resources we have, but the challenges are brought on by those mega, mega issues that we need to try and support women holistically. Brilliant. And you mentioned earlier about, uh, um, you know, we went from other backgrounds as well. And we have Karen here, who is like obviously part of your staff team. Um, so do you get people from, uh, uh, women from other communities as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Sarn is based in the local community, based in Chaverton, and we work with any women who come through the door. Everybody is welcome, nobody is judged, and they are respected for who they are, what they bring, because even the most desperate woman brings something to the table. So our door is an open door for any woman who wants a chat, a hug, a little bit of support and guidance or just a safe space to be who she is. 
Well, it was a pleasure to see you last week uh, with some of the uh, women there were single parents who were, you know, um, migrants as well, even uh, having a wonderful time and uh, lots, lots of learning going on. Excellent. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the education, which is a key factor uh, in, in terms of empowering anybody, particularly women as well. So how do you actually ensure equitable access uh, to, to the educational opportunities? So most of the women, like even the women you saw, because Africa, is, the education is what makes you. So we, we come from a very education-focused background. Was the only way out of poverty. No benefits, no nothing. Even the poorest person tries to educate their child for a yes. better future. Yes. And most of the women you saw, they have degrees, they mm. have masters, yes. PhDs. Yeah, yeah. However, the education that we come from, wherever we come from in the world, mm -hmm. particularly Africa, even though it's based on the British curriculum, everything is based on the British curriculum. Yes. It's not accepted here. So you can't really? come, can't come as a doctor straight away start practice. Okay. You can't come as a teacher and start practicing. So, and because of the other issues like immigration, mm. so people's identities, people's careers just die. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do, we give women an opportunity to use what they have. Yes. So we encourage women to volunteer, mm. we encourage women to start their own support system, yes. to educate others, yes. and to use their education in a positive way. And also to upgrade as well. Yes. And because with the new systems, new places, you have to upgrade yes. to come to the level of yes. requirements. Mm. Encourage women to do that yes. and use the education in whichever way they can. It is difficult. Yes. So we've come up with other ways of good supporting women into business. Mm -hmm. We encourage women to um, get in colleges, to upgrade, have access courses to lead them into desired careers. But most importantly, we support them to be able to do that because it's the other barriers that reduce women's accessibility. Excellent. Like child care and everything. Yeah, I mean, I saw um, a very diverse um, staff force that you have with multiple skills. So that must be a great asset to the organization. It is. Yeah, I think who we are as an organization, we're very small yeah. in real, real terms. Sure. Um, However, we have a massive, big impact, but that impact comes from the women themselves. Yes. We work as a whole team, and that includes every person who comes through the door. Yeah. Um, people come to SAW as beneficiaries and very often leave as strong, independent women, if they ever leave at all. Because one of our challenges is that people don't leave, do they? Sustainability, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but we've got people who've progressed from coming in as a woman, mm. experiencing hardship in many areas, who has gone on to maybe create her own little business, supported by Saul, who is now financially um, on the path to economic independence, which is really good. And COVID, in some ways, whilst it was hard for us, it made us look at what we were doing, didn't it? And we had to think differently, to we had to behave differently. Yeah. Because as a small charity, we couldn't carry on with what we are doing when everything was closed. So we, we woke up, we shook up, mm. and we responded, and the women responded with us and walked that path. So song belongs to the women who, who have made it. Brilliant. And so, uh, uh, you know, coming to the uh, next question, in terms of financial independence, you know, helping them to support, uh, support themselves as well. Uh, what sort of strategies do you employ as you said, you, you help them to maybe set up a business uh, and, uh, you know, so they can create the financial independence themselves. What other the things do you, do you do? I think we need to recognise that we have to work within the systems that are already there. And some of those systems are, uh, have restraints on them. Um, so people, some people who come are not allowed to work. They have no recourse to public funds, so obviously we have to navigate through yeah. that system yeah. to a point where somebody is able to work. Yeah. What we do through networking, we, we get people to recognise their own skills, their own strengths, think about what they've done before, how they can build on that, and where they can go to start the next phase of their journey. Because this is their journey, this is not our journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it must be very uh, hard to um, move into a new country, new systems, 
and uh, if you're not financially secure, it must be very um, hard for these people. Um, just to add on to what Karen said, I would ask women to start with what they have in yeah. their hands, and you do. Yeah. But can you make with your hands? Yes. So even people who are not allowed to work, yeah. or they're allowed to make a basket, they're allowed to eat. So, but whatever you can do with your hand. Get very creative. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Also, the system can't stop you acquiring skills. Sure. Which you can use in your day-to-day life. Of course. Which you can use in your nighter life. Mm-hmm. Because you've got, got the experience of women being asylum seekers and then they get their stick. Mm-hmm. So, ask women not to wait for that moment. Build up the skill. Exactly. We use their skills when time comes. Like businesses, they start at work, they start school. Yeah. Um, projects that they want to do. And of course, uh, you know, this country provides lifelong learning skills. So while you have the opportunities, take it. And a good organizations like you to give them a support. Brilliant. And work closely with um, lifelong learning as well. Okay. So they do come and do courses. Good, to good. The sport courses. Excellent. And I'm sure we'll be doing a lot as well together. We've started already. Uh, mental health is important, uh, as you know, you know in terms of the overall well-being. What can we do to create a sportive environment, do you think, as organizations? Because, um, you know, we can't all do everything other individually. But what strategy or what ideas do you have to be able to work together to support this mental health and well-being? In COVID, in COVID times, um, what we recognized is that uh, we all know mental health deteriorated for many, many people. Yes, yes. Um, what we found was, particularly, and we know within the African culture, there is great shame and stigma around mental health. Um, even though we all have a degree of emotional well-being and mental health. Sure. What happens, uh, what we've done at SOM positively, we've tried to normalise the conversation. We started a group online in, originally, um, back in COVID, where women could talk and we've since moved forward and we have that now every Tuesday between uh, 11 and 1. Everybody is welcome. It's called Serati, Stones and Roses Achievements Towards Independence. Now that's a women-led, women-run group, but very often they talk about issues that affect them and feel that sometimes hinder them from moving on with their life. So things that get talked about there are emotional well-being, mental health, things that they don't feel able to talk about in other spaces. Because what we have is a safe space. And what says in, what is said in that space belongs to the women. We're good. But they're starting to discuss things that are what seen as taboo topics, for example, cancer, um, HIV, um, domestic abuse coercive control, poverty, all the things that impact on every woman's life, particularly in this cost of living crisis time. Yeah, and just to add on to what Karen has said, we try to tell the women it's okay not to be on. Yeah. We created an environment where somebody can come in and just sit down and cry while others are doing their thing. Yeah. Then we go and she says, no, I'm happy to do it. I just want to be in this. Yeah. So, and we do that through the activities that we put fire, where people come and sing, and laugh. I heard a bit on the TikTok yesterday. Yes, we have a wonderful voices. We have a comedy <laughs> project. So yeah, they yeah. come and laugh yeah. and laugh and laugh. Excellent. And so many other things, but also do one to ones. And these little things matter. I mean, they're not only little things, but somebody is a great opportunity. And uh, somebody who has never perhaps sang before might have a beautiful voice. The one to ones as well is. Somebody needs to talk, we always think. Yes, excellent. Uh, you know, culture sensitivity. And I have to add this, um, you know, the diverse communities are, are at the forefront talking about it because they feel they can uh, give value, they can um, give that celebrative environment and learn from each other. So it, it is a sensitive subject to understand. But well, how do you actually... Um, uh, you know, celebrate and re- get the rest of the world to celebrate the diverse cultures that we have? I think even in the room, like on Tuesday, yeah, we always have at least 15 different languages. 
as that means 50 different cultures. Yes. So we have a Spanish corner. Yes. Yeah. And we are lucky if somebody speaks Spanish and talks. It's a global village, isn't it? Yeah. A French corner. Uh -huh. Papa speak French, we have a Portuguese one. Uh -huh. So it's just a diverse space mm -hmm. that we've created to support people. And also, um, we try to make, when we have any professionals coming in, we talk about cultural competence a lot. Yes. But most importantly, it's acceptance, not tolerating. So you have to accept that somebody's different. Yes, yes. So we're not just tolerating who they are, but accepting the differences and we we'll work together. So if I need any translations, I know where to come to. Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of that in COVID. Yeah. Professionals for NHS. Brilliant. Children service. Brilliant. Well done. Advocacy is a system uh, uh, s systematic change, I suppose, in many ways. So in terms of amplifying the uh, voices of the Black African women, uh, I know we'll be doing lots of podcasts and things like that too to actually bring that change and to let um, expert by experience know um, how do you actually um, or in, in terms of how would you actually help to bring that change how can you come around to the policy making decisions to have your voice heard what do you think is needed for me I've, I've said it for the last 18 years the story of our lives mm -hmm being taken seriously. Sure. Recognizing, again going back to that acceptance and not tolerating. Yeah. And it and understanding it's not us and them. It's understanding that Karen originally said even somebody need contributes to the community. They contribute to the society. It's also for um a system like be to understand our contribution. But when a woman is sitting comes with her issues to sit in so on, she hasn't ended up in the hand. She hasn't ended up, her children haven't ended up in care, who's revealed her back, she can go back to that child, I mean. So for us, it's just uh, being taken serious. And of course, we, we attend meetings, we attend consultative meetings, do that. Mm -hmm. But are we being taken seriously? Do you think it's uh, about changing the policy makers? Yeah, on the decision makers, create a more better understanding with them. Or do you think it's the society at large who wants a more understanding? I think probably both. I think both there's room for change yes. always and in every place. Sure. Um, we do have a group of women who are part of the system changes group um, who are working at a strategic level, mm. um, having their voice heard in solidarity, so together as a group, um, to actually inform decisions that are being made around issues that affect them. So they're having the voice heard. Change is slow, we know that, yeah. but sometimes we need to not only just be at the table, we need to be in control at the table and share the lived experiences. And we don't think systems are bad. No. You know, we don't think people are bad, I'm sorry. Um, sometimes the systems can be outdated, they can feel hostile, and they can be damaging to people. So, and I'm sure nobody wants to operate in a system like that. So what we need to do is work together to create systems that are fit for purpose, hit the nail on the head, and are able to listen yeah. and articulate the challenges. I think that's a good way of putting it. You know, funding is always the issue. Uh -huh. And I think uh, it will remain. So, so what's plan B? You know, how do we actually sustain ourselves? How do we work together? You know, what is the purpose of unity, sharing resources, example? What do you think we can do to really um, help ourselves through in terms of uh, the funding? Because we all find, you know, sometimes fight, fighting for the same pot. So what, how can we behave differently to sustain ourselves? So for me, for the last four years, I've been part of um, Greater Manchester and Kerry Chess team. And part of my role, why I was invited to the table, is to understand the need. People like myself, Black Africa, mm. young Black people. So for the last four years, we've been looking at grant, 
are also affording people a space. So, so the way Lanka NHS does funding, people don't go through and don't application for improve that break. Of course, there's due diligence, sure, but don't to the point of what other funders do. So, giving people space to breathe and do what they want to do without just just looking after their core costs, supporting at least one person and a space to carry on. So when it comes, what I've learned in that space is that we need to be creating wealth for ourselves. How do we do that? Is by being in spaces where we can be part of community wealth. Yes. So getting more groups together, thinking of things like how can we become a co-op? Yeah. For example, what can we sell? So been doing training forever for free, but we can sell that. It can mm-hmm. be a product. And what spaces can we be in? that we can be paid for. But how can we create our own world and start moving money from being funded? Because it always runs. Sure. And it's, I think it's all about sharing resources and expertise. And, uh, and the way I think that is possible is to actually visit each other uh, face-to-face. Uh, I know we're all very busy online and things like that. But you can't really accomplish lots of things through that. Uh, for example, uh, you you know you're coming in today and you, wow, and I do, do remember you saying you painted this building as well. It's brilliant. This particular room, yeah. Brilliant and yeah, and Joe fit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and look at the difference. Yeah, and, uh, and, and these resources available for the learners, uh, and uh, you know things like that. Uh, as managers, as organisations, we need to be interacting more, understand more, and I think that goes a long way. Brilliant. Uh, so uh, I think you mentioned uh, um, about how we can work as a society as well, and you mentioned about the funding, and that's great. You know, um, the commissioner is having a diverse panel to be able to understand better what is out there and to be able to disseminate some of that funding. Great work that you're doing. I, I think it's marvelous. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we've possibly missed, both of? You? Um, I don't think there is, but. Just adding that what you're doing now, just if you've been inviting us here, this is pure collaboration. Thank you. And this is how things should be with other organizations. But there's plenty of organizations. Yes. There are those who are starting the label, there are those who are being us. Yes. So I know Action Together have done a lot of work to bring us together, absolutely pulling in funding. Absolutely. It should be doing more things like this. Yes. So people know what else others are doing so that we complement each other's work because there's enough people to support and yeah. and you know it's this training element information uh, helping organizations to do better you know and, and they are they are experts in what they do and uh, but the energy that they put in in different community networks is absolutely brilliant okay Karen would you like to add anything no, other than I think once we learn to trust Very each other's important. organisation, yeah, yeah. once we get to know each other's organisation, yeah. collaboration will happen from the heart and not from the paper. Well, thank you very much for both of you to come. I hope you will get in touch with Son, who are doing a fantastic work. Let us collectively embrace and empower women, ensuring uh, they stand tall with unwavering confidence breaking barriers and uh, shaping a future where every woman can pursue her dreams without limitations. If you're a community service or want to share your experience to help uh, the diverse community of Oldham, please come and uh, visit CWTC. Thank you for watching this thing. God bless and take care.